Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. God is good. We love him. Why, pal? Because God first loved us. Because he first loved us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And welcome to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall, the show where I am your host, James and Pamela Harold. Praise God. He's an awesome God. We Truly love him because he first loved us. Pam, how have your day been today? Very busy. How about yours? Hey, man, my, my day been long. I had a long day today. Um, trying to get a um, some software downloaded onto some um, laptops that um I had to set up for um state state testing. But God is good. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we got through it. We got everything that needed to be done. We got it done. Guys, we are talking about Christ Likeness 101 Part 4. Amen. But first, how have your day been out there? Praise God. He's an awesome God. You guys getting ready for Christmas? Because it's coming. Amen. It's coming. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, guys. So we talked about um, becoming fruitful. We talked about Praise God. We talked. We talked about uh, quite a few things. Let me uh, hold on for a minute. Try and get um, some things into perspective um, and everything here. Yeah. So God is awesome. God. Yes, He is. So we talked about also walking not with God. We talked about walking with God. Well, we're going to talk about more walking with God because we talked about says sometimes you can't talk about walking without God, without talking about what it means to walk with him. And so now we're going to focus on walking with God and walking with God. Sometimes you can't talk about it without talking about walking without God. Amen. Amen. So that's why we separated it like that. And so it's a whole lot of interlocking in there, interlacing in there. Amen. Because God were... When we put on the whole armor of God, we don't just see it one part and one part. We begin, the pieces begin to come together. As you study to show yourself approved, pieces begin to come together. Uh, we said one time, Pam said, you know, when she first gave her life to the Lord, when she was going to the church and everything, there were some things that she didn't understand until, you know, Sunday school and Bible study started kicking in and then old things that she didn't understand, she began to understand. I I said also that, you know, that the Holy Spirit is working even in the one who is still had not yet confessed it to blood. But God knows who his is even before the foundation of the earth is created. So by the time he sent a, an a, 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 a evangelist or whatever he's or whoever he's going to send situation or who, you already have enough in you to know, to understand that when they're talking to you, and it all starts from somewhere, at first you may not know, but somewhere you begin to learn whether it's because of your parents, because of your friends, or relationships, or whatnot, and you begin to understand who is this Jesus, who is God, what what kind of offering do he have for me? What is this love that you're talking about? This agape love. What is the blood? What does the blood do? And so pieces, you may not understand everything. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What do you mean the wages of sin? What is death? You may not understand the deaths, the physical death, the spiritual death, and the second death, which is to be eternally separated from God. But you are know enough to know that God saves. And then you do the prayer of the sinner's prayer. You know enough to understand that you are a sinner and you need to be delivered. And that knowledge keeps accumulating. Amen. Amen. It keeps piling together, working together. It don't just stack and pile on top of what you already know, 
It brings everything that you already know out more in you. How you study is it shows who you are. How you study shows who you are and who you are, it becomes a lifestyle. Amen? Amen. So when you study a certain way, and that means how you apply what you are studying, that means the depth of which you study, that means how much of you are you giving back to the Holy Spirit for growth, for spiritual growth, because we are all growing. We may grow at different rates, but we grow. Amen. Amen. Some of us grow faster. Some of us grow slower, but we are all growing. But the Holy Spirit gives you all of him at the time of your conversion. So at that conversion, you know enough to be converted. Amen. Because God judges the heart. And so that means... When we know God is not just with the head, but we also got the heaven in our hearts. Amen, pal? Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's what we are talking about, guys. You know, things coming together as a whole. And the more you study, the more, the longer you walk. And not just the longer you walk, because some people been walking with God longer than other people and still are not more mature spiritually than somebody who came after because it depends again on how you study. It, it, it comes out showing who you are and who you are becomes a lifestyle. Amen. That's why the word talks about know the tree by the fruit it bears. Amen. And so let's talk a little bit on that Walking with God, lasting faith, because it do makes a difference, praise God. So, and we're talking about lasting faith. What, what, what can I do to make my faith last? So, let's talk about that. In order to do that, you have to be walking with God in order for your, you know, the race is not given to the swift, right, pal? Amen. But it's given to the one who endures unto the end. Amen. Amen. And so that's lasting faith, walking with God, not sometiming with God, not walking without God, but walking with God. And now there's a difference between getting caught up in sin acts and becoming what you are caught up in as a sin. There's a difference. And if you're in Christ, you should not be getting caught up, but you do have growth spurs. If you're a babe in Christ, you are still being delivered, even though you've been delivered from the rages of sin, which is death. But you're still being delivered from the rays that you are used to. And so you're learning how to not do the things you used to do. And you're learning how to do the things that you didn't used to do. Now, what I mean by that? What do you mean by that? I used to hang out in clubs. I used to drink. I used to curse. I used to fight, get in fight. I used to um, have bad relationships. Um, I used to didn't care. I used to scheme. I used to lie. Whatever it took for me to have my way about what I want to, to have my way about. Those things that I used to do, I found myself doing lesser of those things as I came or as I was coming and still is coming into the things that I did not used to do. And those things are going to church, going to Sunday school, going to Bible study, opening, opening my Bible, reading the word of God, talking about the things of God, recognizing 
the things that God had brought me from, had delivered me from, recognizing his mercy, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. You know, so. Amen. Amen. And so I found myself doing things more of what I didn't used to do, less of what I did used to do. So now more of what I'm doing now is walking with God. And the things that I was doing when I was walking without God, I don't put those things, they are laid down to rest. And see, here's another thing. At your conversion, all things become new. The old man is passed away. Amen? So all those things that you used to do, they are now powerless. They have no more influence the way that they had before you came to Christ because now you have power, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And the indwelling of the Holy Spirit began to push those things out of you that are not of God by purging, by chastising. God chastises his own as a father would loving his child. Amen. And he settles you and he establishes you is what he does. And so you have to be willing to give your all to the Holy Spirit because if you're too many of God, you're going to desire the things that are of God. And the, the more you are walking with God, and when I say walking with God, I'm talking about meditating, prayer, studying the word of God. I'm not just talking about claiming to be a Christian, but you don't go to Sunday school. I'm not talking about claiming to be a Christian, but you don't go to Bible study. I'm not talking about claiming to be a Christian, but you don't open your Bible for devotion. You don't pray or nothing like that. I'm not talking about a Christian who's serving the Lord with their lips, but I'm talking about those who serve the Lord with their lips and with their hearts. Amen. Amen. There's a difference. And as you do that, you find yourself desiring more and more and more all the time. All that I do for the Lord, I feel inadequate in everything I'm doing, and it always motivates me to do more. I don't know why. That's just me. That's just my work ethics. That's just my how I study. And so I'm always in the word somehow. Amen. And I remember when I was a babe in Christ, pastor of um, Gethsemane Baptist Church in um, Newport News, Virginia, is the church that um, I was at when I was still drinking milk. And as I come off of drinking milk and start eating more meaty, Word, the word of God is what I'm talking about. And during that period, the pastor called me out twice, my name, recognizing how quickly, how fast, and how much I have grown spiritually since I started. He recognized that in me. So how you study is it shows in who you are and who you are becomes a lifestyle. And he recognized that because he was already walking with God. So people who are already walking with God can see the spirit of God in somebody else. You can see things because they've been there and they understand the growth period of things. Amen. Amen. So he's an awesome God. And you have the spirit of the Holy Spirit developed in you, meaning that you are mature enough to now know how to discern what is of and what is not of God. And so you're be able to see those things in other people. You're not being judgmental. And we're going to talk about judge, judging by discernment. There's a difference because you're choosing the things that are and are not of God. You're judging by 
the spirit of discernment, the spirit of, you have the spirit of error and this, you'll know the spirit of error and you have, you'll know the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit teaches us both those things so we can know what's wrong, we can know what's right. Amen. And so, walking with God, lasting faith, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If Pam, you don't mind reading that for us, please. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Amen. So, walking with God, lasting faith. My son, forget. In order to forget something, pal, you got to first remember it. Amen. Or to have some kind of um um contact with it. You 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 know it somehow. Acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. You may not memorize it, but you remember seeing it or re you remember being down. I was down this road before. Mm -hmm. You know, I was here before. I remember that story. You know, I remember when things like that. Amen. And some things you remember by Memorizing, you know, so we're talking about just simply acknowledging in order to forget something, you know, I forgot you told me that, you know, or I forgot to pay that bill. I suppose I paid that bill or I forgot to get this for the store. I was right there and I keep saying I need this and I forgot. So we're talking about in this case, the things, the law of God, the things of God, forget not my law. In order to know what his law is, you got to study it and you got to apply it. Not just study it and not apply it. Because if you study to not apply, but then that becomes who you are. You become a person who studied to not apply what you are studying. And that becomes a lifestyle. But when you apply the things that you study, that 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 shows who you are. You become a person that that applies what you study. That becomes a lifestyle. It becomes easier and easier for you to do. Amen. In the second nature, in the first nature, in the second nature, you you find yourself doing it unconsciously without even thinking about it. It becomes who you are. And so, but let. Thy heart keep my commandments. Okay, we got two things going on here. In order to acknowledge something, you acknowledge something with your mind, not with your heart. Amen? But let thy heart keep my commandments. So he's saying here, look, not only with our heads, but with our hearts also, we must keep the commandments of God. That's why we say faith without works is dead and works must have faith or else it's dead too. It doesn't count for anything without faith. A lot of people say, well, I'm good. I treat my neighbors good. I respect my parents. I respect elders, but they're not under the blood. So all the good that they think they're doing they're doing it in vain. That's works without faith because they have not faith. And if you claim to have faith, you have the knowledge of God, but you're not putting the, the knowledge in your heart, then you have not works. And faith by itself is dead. And works by itself is dead. They must be combined. But first, faith. Second, works. Works don't come before faith. Faith comes first. Amen? Amen. And then your works equals heavenly reward, the gift of God, eternal life. Amen? That's an equation. One plus one is two. 
That's what that is. One plus two is three. Amen. Praise God. Faith plus works equal rewards. Amen. Glory to God. So for a length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Okay, I'm going to kind of look at this one from the word peace first. And then I want to go back and come for length of days and long life. Because peace might be in your life one hour in a day. But you, 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 you're studying the word of God. And the more you study the word of God, the less likely things would continue to offend you. So at first, Satan is throwing his dots at you and they're, they're sticking you. I mean, they're going all the way in you. They're sticking you. They're sticking you. They're going through your skin, through your, your, your all the way down to your, through your flesh, through your guts. Hitting your bones, penetrating your bone in your bone marrow. It's it just plucking your nerves, just plucking your nerves to pieces. But you're studying the word of God. And so that those dots, they begin to affect you lesser and lesser. To as now they begin to not even touch you. But you can see them coming, but they're not touching you for a length of days. You know, for a length of length of days, one hour, one day, one month, one year, amen, and on and on and on. Things are still sometimes get to you, but not as many things. So you be, that, that list begin to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And sometimes Satan wants you to feel like everything is bothering you. I feel that way sometimes. Like everything, every little thing is just getting to me. But actually what that is, Pam, it's just one thing. And that one thing he takes and he expands it. Magnifies it. it. He does. He'll magnify it mm -hmm. so that you don't see that one thing. You're seeing everything that he's using it in, but you're not seeing that one thing. And that one thing might be one word. Patience or understanding or something else that God is showing me so that I can overcome. Amen. He's revealing to you because the things in the dark must come to the light, mm -hmm. even in you. The word is a two edged sword. Yes, it is. It cuts going in, coming out. It's for the saved and it's for the unsaved. Amen. Amen. Okay, now, and long life, peace. That means if I live to be 110 years old, I should live and have a good, memorable, peaceful, blissful old age. These are the rewards of, 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 of faith and works. Apply the word of God, turning faith into work that it can equivalent rewards. These are rewards. Amen. God, he's, he's an awesome God. So what that does is when I'm older and when I get older or when I get much older, my father, 92 years old. He doesn't complain about nothing, does he, Pam? No, he doesn't. He don't complain about arthritis. Mm -hmm. He outwalk a young man. You almost have to run to keep up with him if you're not in shape. My mom's, she really don't complain about anything. She she have more complaints than my father do. But each of us have different things going on. Uh, go to the doctor to see the doctor. I'm a veteran. We want to you to take this Madison. No, I don't want no Madison. Especially if the Madison going to give me something I don't want. 
Some medicines you take, it'll have in it, it'll give you cold sores. You know what cold sores are? It's herpes. You don't have herpes. Why do you want to take medicine that will give you herpes? You know, you got to read up on these things. And sometimes when you're given in to medicine too easy, and I'm not saying you shouldn't take medicine. I don't know what your condition is. But by faith, God gives you understanding also. I take cough medicine. I take vitamins. I take supplements. I take medicine for my sinus to help my sinuses and things. But some medicines I won't take because I don't want to claim something that is not mine to claim when I believe that God is taking care of it. A lot of times when you're good at it, do something that you shouldn't be doing, somehow God will show up in your situation, in your body, in your mind, in that illness, and you'll feel something like, you know what, I don't need to do this. God got it. God's going to get me through this. But you got to have that development with God in order to know when God is speaking to you. Anybody can't do that. Everybody can't do that. You got to have a development. You got to forget not his law and keep his commandment in your heart. That your length of days and long life and peace you shall have. Shall they add to you. Amen, pal. Amen. Let not mercy. What is mercy? His promises and truth. What is truth? That's God intervening in your life. That's God acting in your life. That's God bringing things to pass in your life. Let truth forsake thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Let not God promises forsake you. Amen. Let not his truth, the performing of God in your life, forsake you. Bind them about thy neck. I have a cross around my neck. You know, we have earrings in our ears and in our nose and in our tongues and wherever else you can take a putting stuff. But bind what? God's, his promises and, and, and his performing his truth in your life. Bind those things around your neck. Learn from those things. Hold on. Cherish those things. Don't let those things go. Desire them things. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Remember it. That's what makes your faith grow. Count pure joy when you go through trials and tribulation. Huh? Huh? That's what it says. Count pure joy. Let it happen. God is an awesome God. He loves you. Those things that are going on in our life, they're going on in our life to mature us. God have good intentions for us. He takes what is bad and he makes it good in, 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 our, in our life is what he does. We are tried because of our faith. We are tried because of our faith, not because of anything else. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. In order to find something, you got to first be seeking it. You got to be looking for it. Amen? Amen. If you're looking for something, you'll find it. Not the door shall be an, a, a, a answer. Open. Ask. And it shall be answered. Seek. And ye shall find. So what are you looking for? You're looking for favor, not only with God, but with man. God will give you favor with him and with man. When you gain favor with God, God will give you favor with man. Amen? 
Amen. He's an awesome God. And we love him because he first loved us. So join us here next week on the Tabernacle Trinity Hall, the show where our favorite night of the B is, where we can say to you that you, you are, are so beautiful. beautiful. We love you. We next love week, you. we'll talk about judging by discernment. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, walking with God. We're going to uh, start at John chapter 15, verses 7 through 11, and then we're going to get into judging by discernment. Amen. God is awesome, God. Be good. Be blessed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's an awesome God.